In this video, we'll talk about how to apply units to our variables, and we'll work through our first real example problem, which will involve some properties of air inside of a tank. So let's say, hypothetically, we were trying to figure out the mass of air inside of a tank. Let's say that we knew that the tank was being stored at 25 degrees Celsius. We knew that the tank was pressurized to an absolute pressure of 200 kilopascals, and we knew that the internal volume of the tank was, what, 10 gallons? Let's enter that as our given information. So again, I'm going to use a comment to keep my equations window somewhat organized. So I'm going to say given information is that my temperature is, what did I say, 25 degrees Celsius. My pressure was 200 kilopascals, and my volume was 10 gallons. Note that I'm using a subscript 1 here, and that's just for my own personal meticulousness. Is that a word? Sure, it's a word. I would prefer to refer to these properties as a state point as opposed to just T. Also, that makes things a little bit more confusing when you're trying to use built-in functions because you tell it which property you want it to use by using T, P, V, etc. So if I wanted to look up some information at a temperature of 10, I would enter that as T equals 10. And if I wanted to say a temperature of whatever my temperature variable is, then I would say T equals T underscore 1. If I said T equals T, that's get, that gets a little confusing to me, at least. So in order to figure out our mass of our air inside of our tank, we're going to have to assume that the air is an ideal gas. So our solution is going to involve the ideal gas law, which the most convenient form for us here would be that the pressure times the total volume would be equal to the mass of the air inside the tank times the specific gas constant for air and times the temperature. Meaning that we would calculate the mass by taking the pressure times the volume divided by the specific gas constant for air times the temperature. We have temperature, pressure, and volume, so we're going to need to know what the gas constant for air is in order to solve our problem. So at this point, you're probably going to be tempted to pull out your nearest thermo book. You should always have one nearby, right? And look up the gas constant for air. You could also use the internet for that, or you could just be a big nerd and have it committed to memory. So let's say that we had assumed or looked up the specific gas constant for air and that it was 0.287. 0.287. So the gas constant for air is 0.287. Now if I were to hit solve right now, ease would give me an error because I did not refer to my variables consistently. Great. PV, that'd be pressure 1 times volume 1 divided by R times T1. Now when I hit solve, <clears throat> there we go, I have a mass and ease tells me that there were no unit problems detected. So I know for a fact that this is not going to be 278.7 kilograms. And the reason is that I entered incorrect units in order to get a mass out in kilograms. So this isn't going to be, A, this isn't going to be kilograms, and B, this isn't a, a proper use of the ideal gas law. This would require me to use a, an absolute temperature and an absolute pressure. And I used an absolute pressure, but not an absolute temperature. So if you do not use units in your variables, you have to rely on your own internal checking mechanism to make sure that the unit that you get out is, the, is what you would get from actually applying your given units. So here, in order to get a mass in kilograms, I would have to convert this to Kelvin, which I can do by adding 273.15 to it. And then I think that I said that I was going to use 10 gallons as my volume here. So at this point, I need to get a unit in kilograms. So if I took kilopascals times a volume divided by an R value in kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin times Kelvin, that would mean I would need cubic meters. Or 10 gallons would be an internal volume of 0.0378541. So I've had to manually convert from gallons into cubic meters. But the advantage is I now have a mass that is going to be in kilograms. 
An easy way to keep track of that would be to tell ease what my units are. So if I went in, I could say, well, this temperature is in Kelvin, this pressure is in kilopascals, this volume is in, you know, so on. And I do that by one of two ways. I can either go up to options and click on variable info, which is where I would enter information about my variables. You'll notice that there's a column here for units. So I could tell it, hey, that mass is in kilograms, that pressure is in kilopascals, that R is in kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin, that temperature is in Kelvin, and that volume is now in cubic meters. Now when I solve, it says, hey, your mass is 0 0.08848 kilograms. Awesome. I could make this a prettier output by right-clicking, going to highlight, and putting a box around it, maybe changing the background color to a nice pale yellow. There we go. We have a nice, beautiful mass of air inside of our tank. But we still had to do that unit version conversion manually. There's a better way. I could make ease do the conversion for me. Before I get to that, though, I want to mention that the other way to have entered units would be to use square brackets. So if I put a square bracket after my volume here and said cubic meters, this is another way of typing in units for inputted variables. But this only works for variables where you're giving it a quantity. This wouldn't work like I couldn't just add square brackets to kilograms at the end here. So it's good practice, at least in my opinion, to include units when you're typing in quantities. So if I wanted to do that here, I would have to have parentheses wrapped around my temperature in order to apply Kelvin to both of these quantities. Otherwise, it would be 25 unitless things plus 273.15 Kelvin, which wouldn't quite be right. Also note that when we typed in our units here, it looks like the way that I typed in my kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin is in kilojoules per kilogram minus Kelvin. But despite the fact that this is a dash or hyphen or whatever the name of that symbol is, Despite the fact that that's a minus sign, Ease understands that I'm typing in kilojoules divided by the quantity kilograms times Kelvin, close quantity. It's just a shorthand way of typing in units. Also note that because Ease does not pay any attention to spaces, I prefer personally to tab out my units when I'm entering information like this. So if I hit tab between the number and the unit system, that puts a nice big space and lines up all the units. I think, personally, that's an easy way to keep track of, hey, this is in Kelvin, this is in cubic meters. I also don't have to figure out where the number starts and ends when I'm trying to read off of a number, if that makes any sort of sense. So if I were to hit solve now, I still get mass in kilograms. Also note that I can get ease to output multiple units. So if I wanted to say, include a mass in kilograms and a mass in slugs or pound mass, I could right-click on this and say, well, output a unit in kilograms, also output a unit in pound mass. So now the output in my solutions window is 0 0.08848 kilograms or 0 0.1951 pound mass. That's just a convenient way of including mixed units in your output. Let's go back. Let's try to remove this manual unit conversion from that process. So let's go back to 10 gallons. Well, I can make ease handle the conversion from gallons into cubic meters for me. And the way that I would do that would be to go, not that, would be to go up and hit options, then this unit conversion info button. So, I'm going to be converting in volume and I want to know how gallons and cubic meters are related. So I would find meters cubed. Lots of options for different ways of typing meters and gallons. So gallons and cubic meters Got to click two things, John. There we go. Gallons and cubic meters are related like this. Again, one gallon is 0 0.00375 8412. 
So I could look this up and make the conversion myself. That just removed the Googling portion of that conversion process. Or I can also use the convert function in Ease. So the convert function is called by typing out the word convert, and it takes two arguments. The first argument is the unit from which you want to convert. The second argument is the unit to which you want to convert. So I want to convert from gallons to cubic meters. So I would type gallons and then cubic meters. So because I put gallons after my quantity here, it will know that once it converts, I will have an answer in cubic meters. So if I go back to solve, I still get the same number despite the fact that I entered 10 and it will output the solution for this variable as being 0.03785. So it handled that conversion for me. I could do the same thing for temperature except the function to convert temperature is different. And that's because it's not quite as neat and orderly. I can't. What Ease is actually doing here is uh, looking up its own internal multiplier, which is what I viewed when I was in the constants window, and then it's multiplying 10 by that proportion. So that doesn't work for temperature, so it has a temperature conversion function, which I believe is called convert temp. So I put convert temp, and convert temp takes three arguments. The first argument is the unit that you are converting from, so this would be Celsius. Second argument is the unit to which you are converting, which would be Kelvin. The third argument is the number. So here I want to convert 25. So, ah, yes. Now because I'm giving it 25 degrees Celsius and it's converting from Celsius into Kelvin, it already knows that this is going to be in Kelvin. The square bracket method of entering units is only for inputted quantities. So I cannot have that there. Now when I solve, I have a temperature 1 at 298.1. It handled that conversion for me. Great. I could also include the units in my third argument there, the square bracket, just like I did here for volume in, in gallons. So I now have, I've taken a problem statement that had mixed units and I've gotten a mass output in mixed units. Great. I still had to assume the ideal gas law, and I still had to do a manual lookup of this gas constant for air. I could remove that step from my solution by getting ease to look up what the gas constant for air is. If I go up into my options again, and I click on function info, this is where you find all the functions that are built into ease, and they're sorted by a couple of different ways. First, we have this math and string functions. So these are functions that it could apply to their mathematical functions or functions for handling strings. If you've got any programming background, you can probably understand what the string function is referring to. But the math functions are useful if you wanted to say, take an arc cosine of some value at some point in your analysis. The thermophysical properties are going to be the ones that we're going to be using the most because this is an ease tutorial for thermodynamic purposes. And the thermophysical properties is where you would get ease to figure out properties for different substances. So once we click on thermophysical properties, we have to select what type of material we're looking at. So here, I have the option of selecting real fluids or ideal gases or a mixture of air and water, etc. So for the moment, I'm going to be looking up properties of ideal gases. Once I click on that, I will have a different list of materials. This right window is where I list all the possible materials for which I can look up properties. If I want to know more about any of these, if I click on fluid info, it'll pop up some information about where that information comes from. So in the case of C2H4, it's getting this information from a paper called NASA Glenn Coefficients for Calculating Thermodynamic Properties of Individual Species. For the moment though, let's just take everything that Ease has as rote. So I want the ideal gas air which is called air. And now I have a list on the left of different properties that ease can figure out for me. So if I wanted to, you know, have ease call the conductivity of air or the density of air, etc. These two boxes down here are where I enter whatever inputs are needed to find that. 
So it takes two independent intensive properties to fix the state. So for most things, I'm going to need to give it two independent properties. So if I were to scroll down to this list and try to find gas constant, I do not have gas constant as one of my options. That's something that Ease does with its lookup properties. It tends to only use uh, a single lookup, if that makes any sort of sense. If it has uh, anything that's derived from those lookup properties, it relies on you to do the derivation yourself. Derivation, derivation, whatever. So I do not need to actually look up the specific gas constant because I know how the specific gas constant is comes from. I know where it comes from, and that's from the universal gas constant. So I'm going to use the universal gas constant and the molar mass in order to figure out the specific gas constant. And those two things are related by specific gas constant is equal to the universal gas constant divided by the molar mass. And molar mass I can look up. So the molar mass function, again, ideal gases, air, the molar mass function is called molar mass. And it only needs one argument, and that's the name of the substance for which you want the molar mass. So you'll notice that down here at the bottom, Ease gives us an example of how to call that function. Excuse me. <clears throat> so I would call the function called molar mass, and that would give me, that would return molar mass. If I hit paste, that'll actually insert the function into my code. So in the equations window, I now have a function which would look up the molar mass for me. So if I had the universal gas constant, I could calculate the specific gas constant for my substance. I could just type out 8.314, but it's better practice to have Ease use its built-in constants. It has many constants built in, of which one is the universal gas constant. So if I go up into options and then click on constants, I could have, these are all the constants that are built into Ease. There are a variety of different types of constants here. For example, we've got the color blue, and we've also got, you know, the Newton, the neutron rest mass, and the unified atomic mass unit, and the color green, and the Stefan Boltzmann constant, etc. But if we scroll down here, eventually we will come across the universal gas constant. If at any point you're like me and cannot scan this list well, you can make it sort by different values by clicking on the different columns. So I want it to sort by description. Now when I scroll down, Eventually, I will come to the gas constant. There we go. So universal gas constant is denoted as R with a pound sign, or for you younger people out there, R with a hashtag. So R pound sign is how I would refer to the universal gas constant within ease. Again, I can make it paste that value directly into my uh, equation if I wanted to. I could also add my own constants if I wanted to. So, I have looked up the molar mass, and I can calculate the specific gas constant by using R pound sign divided by molar mass. That would give me the specific gas constant. So now I have used a, oh, right. Note that I denoted my molar mass with a capital M. And then I used the same M to represent my mass. Ease does not differentiate between the case of characters. This is a very common mistake. So I have to distinguish one variable from another. I could call this the molar mass mm, or I could call this molar weight mw. But to be consistent with my own state numbering scheme, I'm going to call this m1. Now, when I hit solve, Ease will give me an answer. But note that it gave me a very, very incorrect answer. Ah, no it didn't. It still gave me the correct answer. But now that I've changed the variable for which I want an output, now it still thinks that m is mass. So earlier when I told it the mass was going to be in kilograms, now everything's nice and screwed up. So, let's go back to variable info. Let's change our unit for the variable m from kilograms into what the molar mass actually is, which would be kilograms per kilomole, and then mass m1 is now written in kilograms. Now, so that little pop-up is just saying, hey, you wanted a secondary unit of pound mass. That's that's not right, dude. 
<clears throat> anyway, now that I've corrected that mistake, I should be able to hit solve. Okay. Fine. That's how you want to play the game, he's. We can play that game. Now that I have corrected that mistake. Aha! Now I have a mass in kilograms. But I still have the molar mass highlighted, so I could change that back to a normal representation, and I could now have it highlight mass. Great. Look at that. Worked perfectly the first time. Awesome. So, a nice thing about entering units is that ease can detect when there are internal inconsistencies. So, if I had actually used incorrect units in my ideal gas law here, it would have told me, it would have said, hey, that there is a unit problem here. It's, it's good practice to, at least in my opinion, it's good practice to convert all of your given units into the base units for your problem, and then use your base units for your problem uh, internally throughout the entire problem. That way the whole equations window is internally consistent. Then at the end, convert your units back into whatever output you want. So we can define what the base units are for my, my problem by going up to options and then unit system. So I'm setting the base units here that is sort of like the default units for this problem. So I could set, hey, I want you to use SI units. I want you to do default to a temperature of Kelvin, default to an energy of kilojoules, pressure of kilopascals, and a degrees for angles. Now that I've defined base units, that's, that's what ease will use when it doesn't know otherwise. So I have a mass in kilograms. Again, if I wanted it to output in pound mass, I could. But I'm still assuming that air is an ideal gas. I can actually come up with a better solution by going back to my function info pane here. When I was in thermophysical properties, I had looked up the molar mass of the ideal gas air. I actually have properties for the real substance air, which is denoted air ha. Ease has built-in properties for air, just like your steam tables. This would be air tables. So I could actually look up the specific volume of my air and use that to calculate a mass, which would be a much more accurate answer. So air ha is called air ha to differentiate it from the ideal gas substance, which is just called air. And here I could look up a lot of things about it, including the molar mass again. But what I want is the specific volume, which is called volume in my little list here. And again, I need two independent intensive properties to look up the specific volume. So I could give it temperature and pressure, or I could give it temperature and quality, etc. So I want it to look up the specific volume for the actual substance air at my temperature and pressure. So I would select this function from real gases, then I will hit paste to insert that into my equations window. So I now have a little v. So let's call this little v2. Let's say that my specific volume 2 here is going to give me my uh, mass without assuming the ideal gas law. Then I can compare the two masses. So the function for looking up specific volume is called volume, and it requires three arguments. The first one is the substance, air ha. Second argument is what my first independent intensive property, which is temperature. So T equals, and then I would enter my temperature. Again, I could write 300 Kelvin here if I wanted to, or I could just refer it to the variable that I already defined for temperature, which was T1. Then I could use the second independent intensive property as being pressure, so P equals, and I could enter pressure here. But I will just refer it to my P1. So now air will figure out, or rather ease will figure out, the specific volume for air at that temperature and pressure, which is apparently 0 0.4277, and the units of that would be in volume per specific property, which I have selected as mass. So this would give me cubic meters per kilogram.
So I'm going to set that unit here. Now that I have the specific volume for air at that temperature and pressure, I could calculate an alternative mass here. Let's call it M2. Now I'm going to use my volume and my specific volume to calculate a mass. So since specific volume is volume per mass, that means that I could calculate a mass by taking the volume divided by the specific volume. So this would be capital V underscore one divided by little v underscore two, even though little v and capital V are treated the same. That'll give me a mass in kilograms. So I will enter in my units for mass. Now ease has calculated the actual mass and what the mass would be if it were treated as an ideal gas. So I could make this also show in pound mass. I can make this also show as having a box around it with some highlighting. If I wanted to demonstrate the differences between the two, if that were my intention with this program, I might change these to show the same amount of decimal places. Say make both of, make both of them show five decimal places. Five is a number that comes after four. Great. So they differ slightly. I could further uh, demonstrate these two to bring more attention to these two by calling them key variables. So if I select key variables, I could enter a description here. So this would be the mass of air as an ideal gas. And I could select over here mass of air using real gas properties, or rather real fluid properties. Now because I've designated both of those as key variables, they will appear in a separate tab here called key variables. So now I have a nice way of highlighting the important outputs of my program without having them cluttered with all of this extra variable information. I could also now probably safely remove the whole box and highlighting thing. So I'm, I might show the difference between these two with a delta. So I could uh, call a new variable delta m. I used uppercase for D-E-L-T-A again because that's how I differentiate a capital Greek letter delta from a lowercase Greek letter delta. And I would say that this is the difference between M2 and M1. I'm going to have to enter that this is in kilograms. And now I have delta M is equal to 0 0.0002983 kilograms. So I could designate this as a key variable and call it the difference between ideal gas and real air. Hooray. So that concludes the first example problem here. We will have many more example problems. Our next video will pick up some steady flow devices. So we'll work another example problem with a slightly more complex statement. Stay tuned.